Hello YouTube, this is Charlie 426 and today we have the review of the newly released HG Lord Asteroid Double Rebake. So this was uh, pretty much an update version or an upgraded version from the previous uh, Asteroid No Name. Uh, from the Asteroid No Name kit and once again I would like to first off right off the bat say that this I would not recommend this kit for first timers. If you're trying to get your first HG kit this is not that kit so please do not choose this one. The main reason I would like to mention that is number one there's just a lot of stuff going on with this kit so it's really hard to manage. Even right now, uh, after building the kit, I had fun building the kit, don't get me wrong, but after that, like, dealing with the kit, like, transforming it, doing all sorts of stuff, it was a really pain in the ass, so just, just bear with me. Okay, so first of all, let's go over components. So first of all, what you get, of course, is obviously the mobile suit itself. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on on the shoulders and even on the back of the legs. Like, the main reason why you see extra feet is this, is that for those who then did not watch the series, is that this thing has, like, a transformation. This thing has an alternative has an alternative mode which turns him into a more demonish form which in concept and it looks it sounds really cool because i know ever since iron blooded orphans is like ibo series everybody is, has like gone onto the hype train regarding like demon theme mecha so other than that hand wise we get your multi-purpose hands for left and right and we don't actually get any physical weapons to hold on because everything is built onto the kit so other than that, here are stuff what you get. So here we have a sticker sheet, which is actually not as much as I imagined, but still not the best sticker. So as you can see, I did not use everything. I will try to point out which stickers are which. Of course, there are very disappointing stickers here as well. And then here we have some effect parts. So we get two long green beam savers and short beam saver effect parts. And then we get two wire effect parts. Uh, for a certain weapon and other than that we also get a action base once again the uh, To some people who don't have any action bases. This is a good thing But once you get used to these action bases, they're not the best action base out there So in the end I would suggest that you get one of these Tamashii Nations actions act Four action bases in the long run But keep keep in mind so I won't be using this in this review and then here we have a leftover part. Well, technically, yeah, it's a leftover part, this, but this kit, this part is not meant for this kit as well. In the manual, they actually say that if you have a GBN guard frame, you can use these to attach these onto the back. So you can use these uh, capish weapons on, that are on the shoulders of the kit. So for those who plan to modify uh, their GBN guard frame using, um, using parts from this kit, this is the parts that you should be using. Alright, so let's get on to the review. So once again, I'm not gonna show like the the progress uh, of how you how you transform the kit, but because it does require some parts forming. Alright, so let's go over the articulation first. So once again, it's this kit one of the interesting part about this kit is that it's really hard to see the face because there are multiple horns uh, blocking the way. But of course you can these yellow ones are actually connected as ball joints, so you can see the face right over there. Very handsome looking face. And then we also have another extra mono ish design here on the top, which is a sticker. And on the back of the head, we also have a different face right over here, but it's really hard to see over there. But that is that whole face section over there is an entire sticker, which is kind of disappointing, but oh well. And I should mention that this white part here, uh, when it's this, this form, when uh, this thing should not be inside, this should be popping out and... Um, it's supposed to be popped out and something like this but once again this is not I really don't like this connection because it's a very wobbly connection so I just tend to put it put uh, push it down but for those who are planning to get this or already have this kit just keep that in mind all right so the head can go up uh, come on okay let me just actually zoom out a little bit okay so the head can go up that much down that much which is actually pretty a lot concerning its design and then 360 twist I would say it would be possible if it weren't for those horns but once again there's a lot of stuff colliding with each other so I'm not even gonna bother the body the body is pretty basic than you think uh, we have a top section waist section and then we have the middle white section here in the middle white section there's a there's two polycap ball joints from top and bottom so the top torso section will obviously connect to the one in the top and then the waist section will obviously connect to the bottom one which gives you a, a pretty good range of movement from the top and bottom to give a ab crunch as well of course when you connect it it may feel a little bit awkward but you need to push it all the way through 
and then the body i would say because of the, the way how the transformation works uh, i would assume I, I saw that you would have to like twist the body or something but no it's not really the way that's not the exactly way how that works but we still get a decent amount of bend and i think if i force it i might be able to go 360 but considering the structure i don't want anything to disassemble so yeah and then the arms. Now the arms are very, very complicated. So every with the, everything around, it's really hard to uh, navigate. So I'm gonna take off this right red section here and compare with the one with the cape. So without anything else, the arm they have done a excellent job on the design and color separation on the arm itself. I'm not talking about the claw thing, but just the arm in general. Every see everything you see on the arm, the white, purple, and black sections, those are all color separated pieces. And we have a nice 360 twist, and we can go forward and backward a lot. Now you may you may or it may feel like this section is kind of having a wide gap, but because of the this extra cape weapon, that's kind of necessary. And the arms can go about oh boy. Not so much from with the shoulder here, but with the extra ball joint there, you are able to go to the side about 90 degrees. So the arm does not move as much as you think to the side. And on the side, we also have this part, which also works as a weapon. You can flip this open, and then on the end tip, you can also connect a beam saver effect part like this. So that's that. And this section here, this whole piece is connected to a ball joint, and uh, you can see the claw for the alternative mode. You have to basically take this off and attach it to the end tip right over there. So, and we still have your 360 twist on the arm itself. Of course, you're going to have to take that part off, and then we have a decent bend going on here on the arm. So, I wanna, uh, due to the design, it's just the design that's colliding with each other. So, I think if it weren't for the design, it would be able to go a little bit more... Uh, as well, but with everything on, well, you are still able to go 360 on here as well, and then bending the arm is gonna be a little bit tricky because we have this spike horn, which also is a weapon, and you have to bend the arm. But once again, if you're trying to bend the arm, you have to be aware that you have this big white white giant piece on the side. So make sure you're not colliding with anything. So getting these to get moved together is going to be slightly tricky. All right, and then let's get the back. So as the back, as I mentioned, this white piece is supposed to be on, has to be popped up, but I just, because how wobbly it is, I just tend to leave it here. And then here we're supposed to use a sticker right over here. We have to use these yellowish sticker, very ugly stickers. And the fact that these parts are, mold, they all have these moldings, engravings here. I really did not want to apply stickers. So I just decided to bring out a gold gun, the marker and colored it. And once again, it's not the better looking idea, but I would rather do this rather than have stickers. And once again, here we have the other alternative face. Not really hard. It's kind of hard to see. All right, and then let's see what we got on the legs. So the legs, uh, we have your typical 360 toy. Uh, we have your side swivel going on. You're very good. And then the side skirts are very small to the point where they they barely move, but they are technically connected to to ball joints. And then we do have a front skirt right over here, which are. Uh, which does come in a single piece, but you are able to separate them as well. And there's another sticker I should mention. You're supposed to apply these purple stickers on the front skirt. But once again, I really, really hate stickers that involve wrapping around the entire piece. So I did not use them. There's also another purple sticker that you have to use. I think it was around here. Um, but once again, I really don't want to do that. So I decided to skip it. And it does look better without that sticker, in my own opinion. And then this yellow section is actually surprisingly a color separated piece. And then with the legs, we can go to the side about 90 degrees. And then forward all 90 degrees and back, not almost 90 degrees, but there's a lot of stuff going on here. And once again, these are extra uh, leg parts for the transformation. Uh, the back skirt does not move at all. And if there's one thing I would like to mention is that the usually when we buy an HG kit, we would expect a action base hole connected on the bottom section right over here. And something just popped out, didn't it? Um, but you can see there's no hole because the hole is actually on the back here around the back skirt area for some reason. So that's, and that is a little bit of a tricky part. All right, so once again, despite how everything is going on, we we are almost done with the basics. So other than the feet, the feet are pr pretty much your typical ball joint to feet. Like you have a nice pivot going on here, and you are able to move it forward and backward like that. And since it is on the ball joint, you are able to move it side to side. And other than that, let's talk about the sticker. So we're going from the bottom. 
So on the knees, we have these two stickers on the knees, so that's four stickers in total. And then we have another green sticker on the side, so that's plus two stick stickers. And then here we have these ones on the chest, which is eight. And then we have the eye stickers, which is nine. And then we have the mono eye sticker on the head, top of the head, so which is ten. And then the face sticker, which is uh, eleven. And then we have these two. We have these two. We have the chest stickers, which are supposed to go. Uh, here and I, and those are another extra two stickers, which is 13 11 to 13 um, So once again, I'm, I'm just pointing out how many stickers there are that you need to apply and then we have another one here Which is on each side. So that's another extra 15 going on here And then I believe the stuff I did not mention is these two and here So that's about 18 stickers in total and there's another sticker I should mention is the one that goes on to the cape section right over here so this wing section here on the top as you, as you can see, it's red, but what they tell you to do is that I kind of... So, they tell you to put this giant white sticker on the top. I tried doing that and I didn't like it, so I ripped it off and then I tried to color it in entirely white using a gun to white marker. Didn't Did not look well, so I had to erase that marker as well, so... Um, yeah, the white stickers here are not that great. And here we have these extra two stickers I did not use. They, the, the part they're supposed to go is on here. But once again, inside there's an engraving there, so I thought it was a little bit of a waste to just apply a sticker on top of it, so I decided not to. Alright, so before we go over the transformation, you're probably wondering, so what did, what weapon does this guy have? So I'll be right back with the first demonstration. There's actually two demonstrations I need to do regarding the weapons. And then on the third demonstration, I'll sh I will show its alternative mode. I won't be showing the progress, but I'll try to explain what I did. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So currently I am demonstrating two weapons. Number one is the the white parts that are on the side of the arm. So I, you are able to attach the, either the long one or short beam saber effect part, which works pretty well. And then we have uh, these wired weapons, which originally these uh, these parts were, uh, were uh, on the front section of the cape. So uh, in order to do this, it's kind of a big hassle. So number one, you need to take off the shoulder armor parts or cape parts out and then number two actually let me get rid of that and then number two is that so these parts were originally the way how these works is that uh these parts were on the ball joints in the front like this they were on ball joints so they can move around so you have to take this part out and there's actually another hole there where you put the wire inside there and then you attach the other section of the wire into these holes which are actually on the ball joint so not the best connection but still works and on the front part I forgot to mention like any articulation regarding these cape parts number one we have this top section which is actually connected to a ball joint and can move around pretty much freely as much as you want and then we have this side section which can uh, which is connected to a peg right over here and so you can rotate it around of course you're gonna have to move your way through and go, go around but once again there's not much you can do in this format but this is actually another built-in weapon which which right now I am going to demonstrate um, so I'll be right back with the blast type weapons but before that I actually want to say that the way how these work is that number one you just need to pull these handles out and there you go you have this handle this thing and when you look at the tip here you can definitely see a blaster ish barrel so once again these were more of a close combat range weapon so I'll be right back with the long range weapon version which is kind of a hassle to do as well okay so here is the long range weapon so once again you basically turn the capes into more blasters and once again this is also kind of a hassle so let me just explain how these work so let me just take off one side of the arm just to give you guys an example so I'm gonna take off the hand just for the sake of convenience um, so yeah it's gonna be a little bit tricky but once again we already got something popped off and here we go so just ignoring the hand as I just explained the way how these handles work so you pop them out and you obviously need to attach the handle so originally on the arms this is how the cape should be originally so imagine there is the handle there so what they tell you to do is pretty much slide this off so this is the way how you slide them off and then you reposition these to the front and obviously you would have these wings on the top and then what they tell you to do is order wise is that you attach the hand place the you attach you slide this in while having the ball joint uh, and then you connect the ball joint but that is also very tricky so what i tend to do is that number one is i take this part off and then number two i attach the handle i connect the hand to the handle and then plug it into the arm and then what i next is i do is 
I slide the part in that is required, which I believe is this way. So you slide them all the way in, and then on the side here, there's it, this is the place where you need to connect, and you just wobble wobble your way through and kind of force it, and then you connect it. So which gives you a more firm and better connection. At least this isn't as bad as you think. But once again, there's a lot of parts forming you need to do. You need to take this part off, slide that off, and do this a lot of stuff. So you, you, you can kind of get my idea why this kit is kind of a little bit messy or hard to manage. Alright, so now we're going to the big finale to transform it into its alternative mode, which I believe, name-wise, there is actually a name here, which is very complicated, which is called Lord Astray Double Rebake Reversal, or something like that on the manual. So what happens is that number one, you need to like the way how the it works is that you need to flip the arms and legs the other way around, and obviously you need to take these feet off and then open up these feet and do all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff on the shoulder armor. So once again, I'll be right back once uh, I'm done with that transformation. Okay, so finally we have its alternative form, which is which is like a demonic form. So. As I mentioned, it requires a lot of parts forming. So number one, you need to take off the shoulder parts, and then you need to re you need to change some of the positions, and then make it look like these. I'm not even gonna explain that at this point. And then for the arms, you need to flip them 180 degrees, so you can see the shoulders. We're actually on the other side of the shoulders, and this, this is actually the, now the main body, which originally was the back compared to the front. Now. So once you flip up the arms 180 degrees, obviously you need to swap hands and then you need to swap this black piece right over here which uh, holds uh, the ball joint here. So if you flip it over, obviously this will be on the other side, you need to take it out and then replace it here and reattach the arms here and which and take out the claws. So originally these claws would be on attached here, you just need to take it out and re re uh, move it to the front section right over here to give it out that, that to give out the demonic claw look. Of course, you can still see the hands depending on the angle. The legs also uh, basically need to basically you twist the legs like this 180 degrees, uh, and then you flip out the legs that are fo uh, folded on the back side. You flip it out, and then here. But if you want to do that, you also need to take off the take out the original feet and then reattach it to the back right over here. And obviously, you definitely need a action base for this kit to stand because those feet on this kit. Or on, th on this form, barely work. You can see, yeah, those those these type of feet is not gonna support that. Those are like there's only a flat surface on the front, so you need to attach the action base hole onto the bottom section and make it balance. And obviously, you can see, yep, as much as these are just plastic ball joints, they barely work. They tend to pop out really easily. So as you can see, I really like the idea concept. I do like this design. However, it just isn't. It's just not manageable. It's very messy all around. As you can see, even my review was messy in general. There's a lot of stuff that is just going on with this kit. So I rather ha I would like to rather see maybe in the future, uh, not a kit that transforms, not a basic mobile suit that transforms into this, but maybe actually to have a, a mobile suit that looks like this without the transformation. I think that would be something really interesting to see in this size. But, and obviously the legs, you can see the legs, they still have your basic articulation, but because of the way how it's supposed to stand, you can see the legs are folded up here, and these parts has to be as much as front as possible to give out that, uh, kind of like that werewolf leg feeling going on, but you get the idea. Anyway, that was pretty much it for the review. So once again, I do not recommend this for first timers. If your friend says he's going to get this as his first kit, do try to prevent that happening from that happening because you might get the wrong idea on how Gumpla kits are. Anyway, thank you for watching the review. This was the review of the newly released HG Lord Astray Double Rebake. If you guys got any questions or you quickly comment below. Once again, I'm sorry for the review being all over messy, but this kit is all over messy, so which I had no options. Anyway, until then, see you guys next time. <laughs>